Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Jason Park. I'm a feature filmmaker. Let's go ahead and roll the footage. I can do that too, you know. <sighs> nah, I think you're good. Alright. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That was looking pretty good. That was looking pretty good. Okay. Uh, the run was a little sloppy. You know, you gotta work in your form there, but the yeah. times are good. The times are good. Thank you, Coach. Just pick it up. Yeah. Oh god, I think I'm gonna throw a lot of so that was some test footage of the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame with the Surrey anamorphic lens combo. I just wanted to do some test footage to see how the package looks before I start production on my next feature film, Rhino King, which we'll be shooting in Atlanta, Georgia uh, at the end of July, early August. Um, I just wanted to make this video for you guys to, to talk to you from a filmmaker's perspective that shoots you know, full length features about what I think is the best, most affordable camera in 2024. And you might have already guessed it, that would be the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame. And I'm just gonna run into a few reasons why someone like myself decided to go back to the Blackmagic compared to upgrading to the Red Komodo X or going to the Ari Alexa or the Sony FX9 or Barana or whatever the case may be. I'm just gonna kind of break down my thought process as to why I went to this cinema camera instead of like the FX3 with autofocus or the Lumix, you know, uh, the, the main thing about it is you have everything in one package. You have everything in one package that you need to go and shoot your short film or your feature film right now, right? That right there, that took us about an hour to shoot, maybe another 30 minutes to edit, and then we came up with that clip. I created a custom LUT just for the Blackmagic uh, 6K. Let me know if that's something that you guys might be interested in. Um, but I created it just so when I'm monitoring and I'm shooting in um, Film Gen 5, I can see kind of what it's gonna look like. The biggest thing about this camera is you have your five inch monitor on the back. You can see everything clearly. I'll do a cinema rig build um, shortly for you guys to kind of show you guys exactly what it looks like and how I shoot. But essentially, you once you add your lens to this camera, you got your preamps on the side for your microphone, your shotgun mic. Um, you're good to go. You're, you're literally good to go. There's nothing stopping you. And even the price point of this camera, right? Prior to this camera, I had the Red Komodo. I'm kind of jumping a little bit of everywhere, but prior to this camera, I had the Red Komodo. And prior to that, I had the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K with the Super 35 sensor. So I shot my three films on the Pocket 6K, then I went to the Red Komodo and shot our fourth film, Always Smile. The image quality on the Red Komodo is better, but that is where it stops, right? And it's better by just a few points. And the 6K full frame with that full frame sensor has closed that gap very close. It's, there. the footage coming out of this camera is very milky. It's, that's the best way I can describe it. After that, it's up to you as a filmmaker and a colorist as to what look you want, right? Whether it's teal and orange, super clean, super grainy, that, that is boosted colors, desaturated colors. That's all up to you, but to get you there, the full frame closes that gap with the red Komodo and red raw. Um, my current style right now is clean. I just like whites to be white, blacks to be black, colors to be boosted, and just 
a nice enjoyable image i'm not so concerned with oh let me make it look super cinematic like sicario or anything like that i just want the image to be pleasant right um so when you think of something like the red komodo or the komodo x i get it those cameras are they have beautiful images but they're for people that have you know someone else pulling the focus an assistant over here they're not for the one man band filmmaker and the truth is majority of us will be the one man band filmmaker right some of us may get lucky and we'll we'll have funds to shoot big features and and have a crew to hire and all that stuff but for the most part you and i uh and us we're going to be making these movies ourselves so if I were in the market, right, to buy a camera and I wanted to go and shoot a film, mind you, this is coming from somebody that had the $6,000 red Komodo and, you know, had the anamorphic lenses and, and, and I reverted back to the Blackmagic 6K full frame. Now, you would probably say, well, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just keep progressing forward? The reason why is because at some point you're getting diminishing returns. The returns on your dollar for that little boost in image quality, right? Like if the Ari Alexa large format is a 10 when it comes to image quality, and then the Red Komodo is like a nine. Well, the Blackmagic 6K full, crane, uh, full frame is like a 8.2. Like that difference, right, in quality is not worth that difference in 10, 15, $20,000, right? And right now, this the, the price of this camera is like under two grand. I don't know if the sale is still going on, but I got this camera for 15, 1600 bucks when the sale happened. You cannot beat that on this market. I don't care if you're talking about the Lumix, um, oh, what, S5X or S52, I forget what the number is. I don't care if you're talking about the Sony FX3. I don't care if you're talking about any of those cameras. They may have features like, oh, built-in ND. I can just screw an ND on my lens. Like, it takes me five seconds. Oh, it has autofocus. I don't really like autofocus when I'm filming a movie because I like all my pulls to be smooth. And even if I do mess up, I can kind of get it back before the audience notices. Um, stabilization. I shoot on a gimbal or a tripod. So that is irrelevant to me. You just have to ask your questions, what features do you like better? But when you're talking about that organic, beautiful image with B-Raw, Black Magic is right under Red Raw or Red 3D. Like it's right there, right? So once you once you take that price into consideration and you look at something, even like the Red Komodo, which is like four years old at used at like four or five thousand dollars. I mean, you can literally get you the Black Magic 6K full frame cage batteries lenses and everything for the same price of the body and end up being better because now you're just ready to go at some point there's diminishing returns on the amount of money that you are spending on your camera and your gear and it's not going to make your film your short film your 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 reels it's not going to make it any better what's going to make it better is you going out there and shooting right because all of the camera and all the gear right now and all the lenses they all look good like someone can go shoot an Ari Alexa with Cook 45, uh, 30 Cook lenses, Super 35, whatever the name is. And okay, great, your, your footage looks good, but is the story any good? Because if the story isn't, isn't any good, then it's irrelevant. Because how many times have you and I, us, how many times have we seen $100 million films, perfect lighting, beautiful cameras, the best actors, and just didn't thoroughly enjoy the film, right? So the main thing is you have to get out there and you just have to start making your films. So when you think about the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K, you think about the price point, you think about the built-in monitor, the built-in uh, preamps for your microphone, right? You got your uh, gyro, uh, gyro data for stabilization in post, it comes with free DaVinci Resolve. I don't see how you can possibly get a better cinema camera package with raw capabilities than the black magic so if i and and you are a new filmmaker or you're looking some someone to change it up or you just want advice to pull the trigger i absolutely think that you won't be disappointed with this camera now it's more manual it's kind of like a manual car in the 90s you got to drive stick shift but it also makes you 
more engaged and more focused on what you're shooting compared to let me just set it and forget it. There's something about setting it and forgetting it that you tend to get a little careless, right? Whereas in this point, you know you you know when like if you're manually focusing, you know when you got the shot and when you didn't. Like you almost know every time. So yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't I do not not recommend other cameras because everyone has their own style, everyone has the features that they like. But if you're looking for something that's affordable, you're looking for something that can give you that that really good quality. Remember, there's no point in even chasing to try and get Hollywood quality, right? You can get it, right? You you can set your lighting up, you can haze your room and do all this stuff. And that's good for you. My advice is get the best quality that you can get right now. And then the next time you shoot a project, that quality is going to get better. And then the next time you shoot a project, that quality is going to get better. And then you're going to find your style. You're going to find what you like. And you're going to find what works for you and your voice. And that's really what's important in today's world. It's what is your voice when you're when you're creating a project and you're about to make a film? What is your voice? Because that will, will shine through all the noise, right? That is what makes the story that we've seen a million times be unique is because it's your voice. So don't be afraid to make content in your voice. Don't don't try to imitate someone else. Just do it in your voice and your style. And that's what's going to propel your stories to the next level. I know I kind of went off on a little tangent, kind of hopped in everywhere, but that sums up why I went back to the black magic cinema camera 6k full frame it's just for me a complete package for the price point could they have built-in nds sure i don't really care uh could they have autofocus that would be nice but i shoot on manual lenses anyways so you got to ask yourself as a filmmaker as an aspiring filmmaker as someone that's made films what do you want how do you want it to look and are you going to go make your projects if you're gonna go and you wanna be a cinematographer to go shoot for someone else, then it might be worth investing in a higher end camera package. So when they come to you and they're like, hey, we want the Red Komodo X, we want the Ari Alexi, we want the Sony FX9 or whatever the camera package is, they're coming to you for your expertise and for that package. But if you're gonna film your own content, I don't think you need to spend $10,000 for a camera and some lenses. I'm Jason Park. This is Hyper 2 Productions. Good luck.